In this video, I want to give you some tips on how to make your teacher like you, how to make them respect you, and therefore how you can improve your grade in your math class. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why do I want a teacher to like me? And how is that correlated to my grade? Or how fair should that be correlated to your grade? If your teacher likes you or respects you, should have really no impact on your grade. However, there are some things about human psychology I want to explain to you in this video that I think you can use to your advantage. Now, this all comes from a conversation I had with one of my friends over lunch, and he was talking about his son's struggles in math, and his son was pretty Right? He was pretty good at math, had never really had trouble with math up until this year. He was working really, really hard inside the class. He was doing his homework, but his grades was just not reflecting his work. And it was pretty demoralizing, right? He was putting in all this time, all this effort. He had a ton of stress. And no matter what he did, nothing just seemed to resonate. And he kind of felt like his teacher didn't like him. And it was his teacher's fault for all this. And immediately once he said that, I knew, aha, I know exactly what the issue is. His teacher didn't like him. Now, that's kind of a little play on words, because I don't mean literally his teacher didn't like him. Let me explain what I mean by this play on words. So you can use it to your advantage to get your teacher to be on your side to improve your grades. So one of the first things I want you to understand about being a teacher, as myself was a teacher for 14 years, is that I wanted to help students learn math. I wanted them to be successful. So when I could see students that were trying to be successful in my class, they were putting in the work, then I wanted to do everything and anything that I could do to help them be successful. But the key to that was by my seeing them putting in the work to be successful in my class. Because I put in a lot of work being a teacher outside of the classroom. I'm doing constantly creating tests. I'm grading on the weekends. I'm putting in all this work. And part of the human psychology is I want to see that students are reacting to that, that they are putting in just as much work. So one way that we can test that is by seeing that students are actually studying for your tests and quizzes. They're actually doing their homework. They're asking questions in class. They're being engaged. They just don't feel like this class is an annoyance to them for something they have to show up and then and just fall asleep on, right? Sleeping in the class is definitely a great way to show that you are not putting in the effort. So when I put my friend a little bit more about his son, he, that kind of alluded to what his son was doing. He was doing the work, but he was just kind of by himself. He wasn't engaged in the class. He wasn't interacting with other students. He wasn't asking questions to the teacher or other students. He was just kind of there. And and again, like not to say that everybody has to be the always the person that raises their hand or is always doing work or the first one to jump to the board and do an example, but make sure that your teachers can see that you are engaged. Make sure that they can see that you are invested in trying to learn the material, that you are showing up to class, right? Not skipping class, not sleeping in class, doing the homework, doing the reviews, doing whatever the teacher is asking of you. That helps because as a teacher, we put in so much time into our class. When we can see those students that are actually doing what we're asking them, they have a little special place in our heart because we can see that those are the ones that are trying to do the best and unconsciously they're probably going to get a little bit more help from the teacher throughout the year. Showing up and putting in the work is definitely number one. But one of the next things that you definitely have to avoid doing is playing the blame game. Do not blame. Do not blame your past teacher. Do not blame your current teacher obviously, or do not blame your past struggles in mathematics for the reason why you are struggling in math or why you didn't do well on a test or on a quiz. Just don't play the blame game. You need to take full control of your learning. Your past teacher or your experiences is not responsible for your learning. You and only you are. And I know it's a really, really hard pill to swallow because there are so many things that we want to blame or can rightfully blame for why things have been a struggle or a failure in the past. But a lot of those things your new teacher has had nothing to do with. By you, by consistently blaming, that's not going to put you on the right foot. You are in charge of your own learning. Your teacher is there to guide you and help and support you achieve your goals. So show up to class on time, put in the work, and guess what? When you do get a bad grade or you get a result that is not acceptable to you, don't just play the blame game, rip it up and throw it in the trash can. Show up to your teacher, ask questions why you got this wrong. Go back over the results to make sure that you can learn from your mistakes. That is what teachers want to see from the students, that you're not just blaming your failures on something else, but you're taking control of your learning. Now, the blame game just doesn't come up when you fail like a test or quiz, but take ownership of your learning. And what I mean by that is like when you're doing homework or when you're taking a test, imagine what this says to your teacher when you go ahead and just scribble something out, cross it out, and it just looks like a mess. Then you throw it in your teacher's desk and you say, grade this, right? The teacher can definitely tell that you're not taking control of your learning. You are not proud of the work that you did. You're just doing as quickly as fast as you can to get the grade and then to move on. But rather taking control of your learning is saying, Hey, I'm going to put time. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to make this work nice. I'm going to make this neat, eligible, and easy for my teacher to grade it. Again, this is showing your teacher that you're taking control of your learning. When you turn in that test that your teacher has to grade, and let's say they have two side-by-side -side tests. I used to tell my students this all the time. What do you think I'm more excited to grade at 11 o'clock on Sunday night before I have to go to school the next day? 
right? That test that is just a complete bobbled mess that I can barely understand or the test that is neat and organized and very easy for me to be able to see where the grade is. I think you know the answer. It's the neat one. I can see that that student is caring for the grade. And in just in reality, I'm just, I'm just able to reciprocate more favorably to that student. Now, as a teacher, I am fully aware of this bias. And as a teacher, you have to be very important not to just grade students better because their work is neatly written. A lot of students like to play that game as well. That's not the message I'm trying to convey here. What I'm just trying to convey is don't play that blame game. Take control of your learning, right? Do your best on your work. Make sure you show that to your teacher show that best work, make it neat and clean. And if you don't get the result that you want, then take control of that and make sure that you get the help that you need. Your teacher is going to take notice of that. They are going to know that you are a serious student willing to learn. And that was exactly the case with my friend. It wasn't that his child was lazy. They were doing the work, but it was very sloppy. It's kind of seemed like it was being done very quickly. And it really wasn't. It was just that he could do the math actually very well on his own. So he just would do the work as quickly as possible. It just gave off that bad vibe that it was sloppy work to the teacher. I don't think anything that, you know, that was the reason why his grade might've been poor. I can definitely see he probably was not getting the benefit of the doubt because of that reason. You're putting in the work, you're taking control of your learning. The next thing I want you to keep in mind to make your teacher to like and respect as a student is pretty easy, guys. It has nothing to do with mathematics. It just comes down to being kind, just being a nice person. And it's not just being to your teacher. Of course you want to be nice to your teacher, right? I've been sweared at. I've had people throw things at me and be very upset. I'm not talking about that. I think any good teacher is not going to hold a grudge based on a given circumstance or behavior one day or another. But what I think is really important is seeing how students behave with their classmates. We know the students that are nice in our class that are there to help out the other students when they are struggling, when they are feeling down. We know the students that are making fun of other students for not knowing the answer or getting the answer wrong. And that plays into it. Obviously, as teachers, we want everybody to be successful in our class. And of course, there are students that are louder than others and ones that are quiet and keep to themselves. But that doesn't mean any student is more special than the other. We all have bad days, but having simple manners can go a really, really long way. Don't bully. Don't tease or make fun of others. Be accepting and be very helpful to others. And regardless if that helps you out in any math class, that's just part of being a good human. Know when to stand up for yourself and also know when to back away. Sometimes in the heated moments, our frustrations can get the best of us, but know when to take a step back and take a breath. And I think that's something really, really important as students as we go throughout the year, because the thing I miss about teaching the most is those roller coasters of emotions. When you see a classroom of over hundred students, every single day, there's a student that wakes up and has an amazing day and actually a student that is having a horrible day. And you have to be prepared for that as a teacher. And I think as a student, you have to be prepared for that as well. It's just part of the roller coaster of life. But the main thing is, if you can just be kind to people, it's going to be reciprocated back to you. This isn't about getting a great grade, but I can tell you when your teacher likes and respects you and can see that you are likable and respectable to your other students, it's going to serve you well in that class as well as in the future. Now, I'm not really sure if this has any relevance to my friend's child. We didn't really bring it up if his son was disrespectful or just a really nice person. But the one thing I did want to mention to him was my last tip. You know, if your child is working hard, they're taking ownership of their learning, and you feel like they're being nice inside the classroom, the last thing you can do to really get the best benefit out of your teacher to really be likable and respectful is buy your teacher stuff. Buy them a lot of stuff like candy and brownies and gift cards and Starbucks. Teachers love when students buy them stuff, especially me, but I'm just joking. But please don't buy off your teachers. That is not going to make the difference in your grade. A small little gift can go a long ways, but make sure it is something that is of value where, where nothing would be perceived for value to be given back. Now, however, if you want to support me by giving me a super thanks for this video or joining me on my channel memberships, I would absolutely love and appreciate that. Because unfortunately, I don't get Starbucks gift cards anymore. It's kind of a sad, sad time. I used to actually always do contests where students brought in brownies in my class and we just eat treats all day. It was actually a good time. But anyways, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Hopefully you can utilize these tips to make a better impression on your teacher. So hopefully that you have a better relationship with them and that is going to serve you in the class as well as in real life. As for now, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.